Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. If life has knocked you down, pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest, Josiane Apollon. She is born and raised in Paris, France. Dr. Josiane is a relationship researcher and a 2015 fellow of the American Association for Marriage and Family Therapists and Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration. Formerly, she was trained in family therapy. She earned her bachelor in motion pictures and her master's in mental health counseling from the University of Miami and her PhD in marriage and family therapy from Nova South Southeastern University. Dr. Josiane is a licensed psychotherapist and earned certifications in clinical hypnosis, integrative coaching and strategic interventions and has been mentored by the pioneer in strategic family therapy, Chloe Madonis. All right, welcome to the show, Josiane. Hello, hello, Sheila, how are you? Wonderful. So nice to be with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being a guest. And I'd like to start this show off by, actually this show came about based on my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom and back into action in any situation. I actually wrote the book before the, the pandemic okay. <laughs> and, and it came out in August um, of 2020. And mm -hmm. so it's been very popular because it's on point and nobody could expect or fathom the crazy situations we've had to deal with this last 13, 14 months. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to start by maybe asking if you have a time in your business or personal life where you hit a tough situation and how you got back on track. Oh, I love the question. This is those questions that people usually think that the, the worst is going to come out, but actually the best comes out. Yes. So uh, thank you for asking this question. So yes, I do have... Um, the one of the worst, I will, I will, yeah, I can say that it was one of the worst situation that happened to me. That when I found out that my husband was cheating on me, and uh, I, it's so common, right? And nobody thinks that's going to happen to them. And when I did find out, um, I was uh, actually not devastated. Mm -hmm. I was actually so happy. Finally, thank you, Lord. I was that for me was lifesaver right. because when I, when I, so I grew up in a, you know, broken family and whatnot. And my dad did that. So I did expect that it was my pattern that was already in my mind. And of course I, you know, just uh, went into the pattern with the same type of expectations where that was quite low. And um, when, when I did find out, so and I don't know if it's because I'm French or what, but actually it, it, it came, it dawned on me that I was freeing myself. Yes. That situation happened to actually open my eyes to who I wanted to be and who I was not 
being by by just waiting for somebody to save me to become mm -hmm. different to be to for the person to actually come out for me to come out and um okay. so it, it was it was really um um of course it was it was a breakdown but the breakdown was necessary in my life in order for me to become and what happened is instead of so i was upset yes for maybe 24 hours mm -hmm. and i could have broken everything around me because i was so upset and then i it's just done on me wow that's what i needed you know i didn't know i had that rage <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so now I'm laughing, but oh, yeah, I was not laughing back then. Uh, but then I, I realized, I look at my husband and I, I saw him so depressed, so ashamed of himself. And his self-esteem was so low that I didn't suspect him to be like that. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, okay. That's interesting. Uh, I is the one doing the thing, and he he he, he didn't expect that I would real really act um, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? You know, it's your it's on you. It's your uh, actions. Those are your behaviors and not mine. So mm -hmm. you're actually helping me right now. Mm -hmm. I needed that. So I asked. For the family to have actually a a meeting and i ask him to apologize for everything that he has done you know the line whatever and uh it was cathartic for the whole family and we needed that we didn't know we were we were working on excel sometimes and we didn't know what we were doing and um and why why it was like that and um so when when this happened, he apologized to the kids. I have three boys. Um, uh, now they're much older. and um, But at the time, they were like in high school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they real, I realized that everybody was in a transition time. And that happened just when one was going to law school, the other one was going to... Uh, um, to college, to, uh, to uh, Chapel Hill. And then the youngest one was entering high school and i was like wait a second okay mm -hmm. you know i sh you know how is it going to happen especially for black kids to not be able to count their dad in there and i didn't want to have any triangulation meaning that it, they would have been you know caught at the wrong time at the worst time i should say in their lives because they were making that transition into kind of adulthood and me and him, my husband and I, would have been like probably fighting just how we're going to do it, you know, and how to do it, and and what is it that we want to do, if anything at all. And um, so I paused myself instead of making a rush decision, and that was the best breath that I've taken, you know, the longest breath I could have taken, I too, and. Uh, and I started, actually, I think it was with Debbie, uh, was it with Debbie Ford um, or Chloe? I think it was in 2012, we did the, um, the um, uh, 2013, we did the um, mentorship. Yes. The, uh, okay, so that was just at the same time. Yes. And, I, and I was like, I don't know what to do. And, and it was so funny because Chloe was telling me, just be French, relax, you know, relax. And I was like, what is she talking about? I don't remember what it is to be French anymore after 20 some years back then of, of being in the States. And, and, but yet it did resonate with me. It, it was like, what is it to be French? What is it to be American? What does she mean by that? It was like a quote she was sending me. And of course, you know that Chloe is from Argentina, although she lived a long time in the States. So um, there was a cultural link, a thread that she was asking me to tap into, mm. you know, be myself. Yes. And that resonated with me, Sheila. That was like, yeah, maybe she's asking me to relax because everything is like, I'd say that to my mom and she was like, okay. And, <laughs> and <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, what's the big deal? And I'm like, she for real? And, and then I realized what I had taken from this culture, the American culture, which was a lot of pressure 
in relationships? Uh, what do we expect? That Hollywood type of relationship that's so perfect and wonderful and love forever and whatnot, right? And, and reality, just reality. And that reality would have been my reality. What is exactly what I wanted to do with it, right? Mm. And that's when I invested in myself and got into that um, a wonderful uh, program with uh, Chloe for the strategic uh, um, intervention um, mentorship. And uh, that helped me tremendously. I would not have been able to, 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 to have done that transition by myself to say, you know what, I'm worth it. I'm going to invest in myself. I don't care what you want to do. I'm going to do me. And from that day on, I, the same year, I, I, so I, I applied to my PhD program and went into the family therapy um, program at Nova Southeastern. Mm -hmm. And I started traveling and, and doing things for what is it that we expect from relationships? Maybe that's the problem. What exactly do we want? Mm -hmm. You know, who are you and who am I in that relationship? It's kind of a sacred little part here. And a sacred, but at the same time, we, we put in there so much yes. without talking. Mm hmm just the energy. Yes, the expectation. And we- In we, it. Yes. Yes. And, and it's all body language and it's in the energy, it's in the field basically between people, between you know, our loved ones, our kids, or even our, you know, our partner. And I realized that, okay, I needed something else for myself and I, I wasn't sure where to get it. And um, so I, when I started the program at, at, at the, at, in the doctoral program at the NOVA, I knew I wanted to do something about um, couples, but I didn't know what exactly. So I went to actually, I said, okay, maybe we can fix it. I wasn't sure. I was uh, like, most of my American friends were like, leave him. And, uh, and, and the, the, my elder friends were, we were Jewish or Italian or, or French, we were like, what's a big deal? You know, live your life, end your life, end your life. You know, do you, girl? And uh, so I said, I, I was confused. So I said, you know what? As, as going into a family program, marriage and family program, let me go get some, uh, some um, therapy with my, with my uh, husband. So we went to this guy, and I think it's funny because his name was Dr. Phil. So we went to Dr. Phil, and, and Dr. Phil was like, um, he, he was a white guy. And, uh, and for me, I didn't see the problem. I was like, yeah, you know, we needed help. And he's like, are you here for us? I mean, for, are, are you? So I say, is your name Dr. Phil? He said, yes. So yes, I'm, we're here for you. And um, he was shocked that we were coming to see him. Hmm. And then I knew there was a problem. Just I, I, we felt his energy. And that shifted us, me, especially me, because my husband was more like used to it. And I, I said, you know, there's something wrong. What do people do when they're not in therapy? Because that type of uh, welcoming greeting for our first time going was not the best. Mm. And we, I think we took maybe two or three sessions with him, but really the, the current was not going. And, and then I say, you know what? Let me go into the program and see what I will get from the program instead of going out, out there and wasting my time and money and the program was good, but not enough. So I did keep looking outside and I found this amazing person, Heidi Schleffer, who has created the best program. She's international, she speaks seven languages. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, um, and she's a Jewish Holocaust a survivor uh, child, you know, a descendant. So I was, I was really impressed with the way that she was mixing her culture with this uh, way of being, which is what she called the relational maturity, the relational freedom that you get from that relationship. And from her, I got the compassion, the compassionate love and understanding how 
before you really try to understand yourself also, you need to understand if you are in a relationship, whether it's with a child or a partner or somebody else, a coworker, you do want to create an imaginary bridge to get into their world and to see what is happening to try to understand them first, mm -hmm. you know, because they're not going to understand you first, right? Yeah. Because if you know better, you need to use it in order to get to reach out basically into this other human being who's there and who's going through whatever's going on. And that's basically what I did with my husband. I reached out to him and uh, he could not believe it. And he's, he actually, I reached out to him with that imaginary bridge, but we went to the program with Haiti, which was a group of um, of couples, and uh, you stay from the Friday to Sunday, so it's kind of intensive all day, wow. and she does interventions with you, and uh, it, it was really intense and very uh, emotional, and everybody, she takes you from laughter to cry in one one second. You know, it's she's so deep. And um, while I was, I was, you know, attending this program, I realized, you know, I didn't have any hate, really. I mm -hmm. I had anger, but no hate for him. Mm -hmm. And that helped me do that, that uh, intervention, which was to bridge, reaching out into his world to see what was happening. And not to give him any excuses, but that was... That's what allowed me to see him in his humanity, in his vulnerability. Mm. You see? And I, I, I felt touched by, by it. I really felt touched. I, I realized that um, I was all about the kids and he was trying to have a, a, an adult relationship with his wife. And I was like, uh, we are busy here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I, so there was definitely some part of my uh, own uh, behavior that were not so welcoming into the men and women relationship. But then when you get to have children, it gets very, you know, complex, right, to say the yeah. least. So um, I was able then to, to understand how to use this energy that is universal. It's the cosmic force that's around us, in us, and that make us so special. Like in the words of uh, uh, Pierre de Chardin, he says that we are not human beings, uh, you know, having an, a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Mm -hmm. And I took that as, you know, a sign that, wow, we so don't know who we are. We are so lost. We have been taught, mm -hmm. you know, a way to be, which is to be in competition. And we are in competition with us against ourselves and against even our own loved ones, our own partner, because nobody has taught us how to be in a relationship, in a strong relationship. We go through school. I went through um, uh, a PhD. They still didn't teach me that. Mm -hmm. I had to go outside of the program in order to get it. So imagine how much pressure all over the world, as humans, we are going through because we don't know really. We, we hear a lot uh, of talks about love and how to be in a relationship, but we, nobody tells us how to do it. And that is exactly what I went through the PhD. So I started with that. I started with, you know what, I need to find out what it is. So I went and researched it, and then I understood that uh, through the research and the literature, the scientific literature, they actually uh, created this uh, construct, compassionate love, that means, you know, unconditional love, because it was lacking in the world. So they had a meeting in 1999 with all those scientists, these politicians, these um, uh, religious uh, um, um, leaders, and science and, uh, and economists, and they all got their mind together to see what is it that we need. And so some agreed to have more compassion and some said, no, we need love. And they, and they said, well, we need both. How are we going to do that? And they came up with this operational definition of the um, compassionate love, which is unconditional love. It's that type of love, which I love from um, uh, Lynn Underwood. She mentioned that it was, um, 
that type of love that doesn't give you indigestion. Mm. And I'm not, <laughs> I just loved it. I was like, yes, that's the, the, the type of love that I want. Because we hear a lot of uh, different types of love, right? Romantic love, uh, passionate love, and whatnot. But this type of love was the one that you, you really care about the other, and you want the best for the other two. You really want, you know, whatever, not only in good times, but also in bad times. You want to be able to reach out and see, you know, how can I help? So they, they were thinking of it for humanity and for others and close relationships, but not necessarily for intimate relationships. So what I did then after a few years after, later, I went in and uh, in 2019, I did my research on uh, black couples in order to see what, you know, what is it? Is it there or is it not? And, um, and there was a twist because at that time in, Oh, it was a pretty um, hectic time. There was the um, the Me Too movement with a lot of uh, uh, rape coming out, and I was talking about mass rape from uh, the trauma from uh, slavery. Uh, so a lot came out, and um, and I was thinking, okay, but how can we amend for that? Because nobody, okay, in the states, imagine. Nobody really received treatment, not white people, not black people, for what's ha happened in the past with our ancestors. Nobody was able to really amend for it. And if the strongest force is love and compassionate love, then why can't we use it? So I decided to, to write this book now on that, on compassionate love, in order to see how if we start, instead of starting at the big level of a nation, we should start at home. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if we start at home, then maybe we can understand and go with something inside of us that's in us, this inherent to our, the way that you, we, our blueprint is, you know. And so if we are spiritual, if we are divine being, it's already in us. Yes. But we need to know how to activate it with another mm -hmm. because it's only with this connection with this other person that we can get it to activate and to remember how to use it because it doesn't get activated when we are isolated. Oh, and we are so isolated right now in our world more than ever with some, some places going back on lockdowns. I just talked to two friends in Canada that are back on lockdowns and different places are still struggling. So it's almost like the universe is kind of reminding us how important community is. Oh my God. Vital. It's vital. It's vital. Why? Because we cannot do without each other. Mm -hmm. We cannot do without each other. That's, and not only it's, it's, it's vital, but it's also preservation. It's like this divine force, this cosmic force was telling us, hey, don't hate each other. Have you it. need love, you need this love. I, you already have it in you. You need to use it now. This is the time to use it. This is the time for couples, so many couples, so many relationships. I mean, it doesn't have to be a couple. It could be a polyamorous relationship as far as I know. But you know, whatever it is, we need it because we need to remember who we are. Yeah. And then at the base, mm -hmm. at the base, at the very foundation of our being is unconditional love. We are wired to love. So we've been taught as this is an evolution, the human evolution is about competition and the, the, uh, the, the love, the fittest and whatnot. No. It's not. It's collaboration. It's unity. It's yes. togetherness. Now, let me ask you. Um, so, where did your relationship end up? Are you? So, yeah, that's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yes. So we are still together. So it's wow. been like twenty-four years. So going through the thick of of all it is, and um. And uh, so we had uh, some uh, some definitely challenges, 
um, and uh, many, many uh, uh, lawyers involved and whatnot. And then, uh, and then we decided recently actually to, oh, you know, it's been that so quite a lot of years with, with this thing going, it's time to fold the page and, you know, to move on. So, um, so we're still together with a post up on the side. And, uh, and uh, actually, this is the best time of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. This is the best time of our lives because we get to appreciate each other in a way that we, we are in a relationship with more freedom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never thought it would have been possible. And so that's why I say, you know, going through the breakdown was necessary. Because I learned so much, even going through uh, getting a lawyer, I learned so much about my relationship with my, my own husband. And I learned so much about myself. And I learned so much about, oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. There's a lot going on here. And then the kids, you know, um, in, in Africa, in, um, in Europe also, I find that family and also in, in the States, but it's different because I find that I, I find that older and only people are more isolated, hmm. but uh, in indigenous uh, 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 population, you find that there's more the family is key. Yes, you know, you know? and so in Italy, in, in France, it's like it's all about family. It's like you know. Right. So I I have a. Um, we are eight brothers and sisters now. I just lost one of the eldest um, a month ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are tight, very tight knit. And it's so necessary right now. Mm, yes. You know, even though my parents are divorced, you know, and they showed us how to be divorced in a, in a loving way, in a compassionate, loving way. Mm -hmm. And they, they see each other almost daily. They live separately, of course, but they, they, you know, my dad is 90, my mom is 86. So it's not that I'm preaching stay in a relationship if it's not working for you. No, I'm not preaching that at all. I'm definitely, I'm definitely for um, emancipation, liberation, you know, of every single human beings, whether you're straight, mixed, gay, same sex, whatever, you know, or, or um, um, trans. It's important to know that, you know, you need to ask you the, the, the right question. Questions mm -hmm. are there to liberate yourself, but you need to ask that question. You know, is it in my best interest? Is it, is it in the person's interests? Is, and what is the person's needs? And what are my needs? And once you find out all these things, you know, to see, then you can put it aside and see, you know, do I feel love? Mm -hmm. When was the time that I felt love just for myself? Right. You know, not because I have a PhD or I have years of experience of clinical experience, but just for Josiane mm. or for Sheila, just for mm -hmm. who you are, the way you are, the way you look. And just you feel that that person is gazing into your eyes and they just love you. Mm -hmm. And you can feel that energy, right? And when you feel that, and usually that's how I start with my my own um, uh, clients, whether couples or individuals, I start with a with a um, uh, how do you call this uh, a meditation. And um, I don't think I have time to tell share it with you, but um, it's it's a meditation. Uh, it's the appreciative heart. So it's a kind of a, a modified version of. A, um, Debbie Ford's meditation, and it, it was just to recognize, you know, how to be appreciative and grateful for everything we have right now. Mm -hmm. That's so important. Yes, it's so important. It's vital, you know, to to just even appreciate our bodies. You know, mm -hmm. they're going through so much right now, and we we think we know, but we don't know how much they're going through. You know, this is a, we're getting a new earth, guys. This is a time to understand how to just love yourself. You know, kiss, kiss, kiss and love and hug yourself because your body is acclimating to another earth. Mm -hmm. And the earth is, I said, enough, enough of hate, enough of not enough. You are enough. Everybody's enough. Everybody is made out of love. 
just look and try to stop looking at what's wrong and try to look at what works. Yes. And I think that's so important. Learning self-love is something that parents actually teach. If you point out what's wrong all the time, either with your children or especially with your spouse, they walk in the door and here's everything you've done wrong. Who wants to go home to that? I'd go somewhere else. I'd be like, well, that's okay. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need to hear what's wrong with me. I already have my own recording playing. We want to put in what's right and exactly. the gratitude to look for what's right. And even if you want to help someone to change, maybe they're working on changing one area or another, or you're working to um, somehow have a middle ground with whatever the thing is at home. Then with that, if you come from a place of their strengths and loving them and asking in a way that's that's collaborative and loving they're going to be so happy to okay i'm going to take out the trash i'm going to help out with exactly what, wash the dishes <laughs> and instead of you know you walk in and you get beat up with what's wrong and oh you got a c you should have got an a in class and the kid is like wait a minute i tried so hard why am i going to even bother exactly. and so that makes such a difference. It makes the whole difference. It's, you know, literally compassionate love is everything. It, it changes your life once you know that you, you're looking, you have the right lens. You're looking at, okay, you're seeing the person and you're seeing through what's right with them. What, you know, the, their, and you're reminding them their qualities, their strength. And they, they, they cannot hate you. They're going to love you. You know, even if they do something bad, we have to understand we are in a human suit, okay? This human suit needs love and care. But if we, if we keep building it up, it's going to react and give us a cancer, give us, you know, uh, um, a tumor or something, you know, diabetes and everything else. We're going to have that indigestion. You know, because we're not taking care of ourselves and we're getting because a lot of people also don't understand how, what it is to be interconnected. That notion of interconnectedness that because we are energy and energy is all around us and inside us, we are making every time we make a choice, we are the, the where we are is is as an effect on the world. Mm -hmm. You see, on every living system, not only us, but the 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 animals, the the animal kingdom, the nature, the trees, everything. Okay, so if, for instance, there is a fire in the Amazonia, in Brazil, it's affecting us. It's affecting us. Because we are all connected. So whether it's in Africa or in India or wherever, I mean, this is the best time to realize, wow, we are connected, right? With a pandemic. Connected. So connected and so blessed to be connected. And that's that's the thing that it's it's something that even if you're working with businesses, I, I do consulting with businesses. I also do some personal consulting and I'll work with a business. And the next thing you know, we're doing relationship work. We got the business in order, but now we're going to work on the other, the other parts because we're not just our business. We're not just our relationship. We're, we're the whole person and all those areas are affected. And once you start fixing one area, this is in business, then your relationships get better. You learn about teamwork, relationships at work, and then it goes to home. And that's the same with any kind of community. It starts with the self-work and that self-work, self-love, and then self-work to change those patterns that maybe we don't even know where we learn. Where do we learn these crazy patterns that aren't even aligned with who we really are? We didn't have those when we were children. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that <laughs> why don't we pick them up somewhere though <laughs> we got to put them down <laughs> <laughs> and i love what you're saying about uh actually businesses the business side because the 
the model that I picked to do my research is actually a model for, um, it's appreciative inquiry. So it's a model that was used by, in, that started in business. It was um, uh, David Cooper Ryder who was uh, trying to shift, there was an hotel who was not doing well. And he told them, listen, instead of uh, looking at the, your problems, go look at the best hotel and see what's working over yeah. there and come back and give me, show me what you got. Yes. Oh, that makes so much Basically. sense. Basically. And by doing that, it makes so much sense, right? Because the, the, the thing is, a lot of people, when they go for trauma, even in a business, you know, there's uh, difficulties. Um, but you're still going through, you know, pain, some pain of, of coming out, making it. And we have a tendency that's, that's been millions of years in our, in our uh, DNA to look at what's wrong. Is there something, is there danger? And then we get alerted even when there's no danger now. That's the problem. And uh, so we have to retrain ourselves to understand that we have the choice mm -hmm. and that every choice matters. Yeah. So the little choice to the big choice, they all matter. So if we, if we look at the wrong side and only to the problem, because we energy, it's going to expand. Mm -hmm. So if we want something better, we have to have a vision and that vision is going to help us really start to see, oh yeah, I would like more of this, more of that. And you know what? I have that client and that client, you know, was so helpful in, in the feedback that is I'm going to use it to go and give more of, of what that client told me, mm -hmm. what, you know, and so when you change your your lens and you get to understand that why we have each other in our in our field in our space is because we can't really see ourselves we need the other mm -hmm. and the other is teaching us how to be how to love is by being by and us by accepting them by accepting not and, and that's why it's so important to know that everything that comes out of our of our mouth has to be a language of abundance of uh, appreciation and not a language of deficit because right. a lot of times we're using a language of deficit because we didn't learn better but mm -hmm. we can make the choice every single time to be you know that 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 person even when i go to the supermarket you know, just say something nice to that person. That might be that the only thing that they heard good, you know, for a day or for weeks. Who knows? Right. right. So it's important to, to try to, to, to use this language of abundance, of, of appreciation, of love, to give it to others. And without, you know, it's unlimited. It never, it's, it's never ending. There's no, you know, there's no limit to it. It's free for Christ's sake. That's what I say in my meditation. It's free <laughs> and it's there and it's a gift that we have. You know, it's our right. Yes, I totally agree. And there's something about that gratitude. When my, I, my house burned down, I lost my car, I lost my cat. That's why I wrote the book. I thought, okay, what formula did I use to get back on track? Yeah. And one of my sons loaned me his beater car and I made it so beautiful. <laughs> I lined it up. I put the, the positive stickers on the visors. I put beautiful music. I was living in one of my rental units, like the, the um, janitor closet almost. So I could rent the rest out because everybody needed a place to stay. Oh, and yeah. I was suffering, but I decided, no, I'm not going to suffer. I'm going to be in this positive state and have gratitude. Everybody looked at me like I had lost my mind. What is she thinking? <laughs> what is she doing? Do you know, within a month, I was blessed with more abundance than I could imagine. Amen. Yes. And so it was, it was staying positive. And I was like, I'm going to make this little teeny broom closet, the best beautiful place. And my rental even was this little humble cabin. People would repeat visitors. They would come there to have their honeymoons. 
And it was, it was very humble, but you make it beautiful. You make yes. everything wherever you're at, where you find your business at this time of year with all this crazy stuff going on, wherever you're at, make it the best you can for now in your relationship, in your relationships with anyone, show up, be present, be the best you can. And then things will just keep getting better. That's yes. what I really believe. I, I totally agree with you. I, and that's why we connect <laughs> because we think alike. We're yeah. like-minded souls. And uh, it's, it's, and it's, it's for a reason. So when you meet people, even in business, when you meet people, you don't meet them by pure random uh, uh, situation. You meet them because you're going to learn something from them. Mm -hmm. And it's your job as a person to ask the question, what's the lesson? What is it that I need to learn from that? And that's why you have to be in appreciative mode because it, it's every time you meet someone, it's a gift. Yes. Every single person is a gift. Definitely. It's exact. Even when a person is upset with you, you yeah. have to ask yourself, you know, what type of person would do that? Because the person might be upset, but there's something in you that also is upset. And then when you ask yourself, you know, what type of person, because you're trying to find the quality, there's a quality about the, mm -hmm. the moment. So if the person is like bossy or mean even, then ask yourself, when was I mean? When did I display such similar behavior? Right. And when was it useful? And when was it not? Mm. Okay? Yes. And when, like this, you know, because we're creating our own reality. We really are. I really believe that. Now, Josiane, we're coming to the end of the hour. Mm. And I'd like to ask, how can people connect with you? When can they expect your book? Um, or how mm. can they work with you? Oh, sure. Thank you for asking. Um, usually I always forget that part. <laughs> but yes, uh, they can reach me on Instagram and Facebook at Josiane Bonte or Josiane Apollon. And also at integrative, theintegrativewellness.com. That's my website. And also um, the book is coming up in the fall. Yes, 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 yes. And the name is going to be Compassionate Love uh, in Intimate Relationships. Okay. So um, thank you so much for having me. It was such a tremendous time that I, I just spent with you. And you need to come on to my women's group to, uh, to just uh, uh, be there for a moment, a nice conversation with uh, other women. Wonderful. Well, I will be there and then we will share this. And also, once the book is out, we will have another meeting and share more about the book and how people can get that. All right. Thank you, Josie. Thank you. Thank right. you. Bye. All right. I have found something magical, something new that I am loving at this stage in my life. I have been switching to the cleanest, best, healthiest makeup shampoos, uh, facial products. So I did find a incredible uh, makeup line and they have been around quite some time. It is called Beauty Counter. And if you go to beautycounter.com slash Sheila Mac, S-H-E-I-L-A-M-A-C, or SheilaMac.com and at the top of the menu, look for natural beauty. That will bring you to the site where you can learn about the specials and give clean beauty a try. I am just loving the difference it's making in my face. And one of the things that was really bothering me was a lot of the other products. I, I could not find eye makeup that wasn't irritating. So this is really like one of the few products I can actually wear around my eyes and so I'm really loving everything. It makes my skin feel really clean and fresh. And so give it a try. Again, SheilaMack.com slash natural beauty to learn more. Reboot your life. When is it time to give a relationship the boot? 
how to break up with any relationships that waste your time. Dear Sheila, I have been in a relationship with Paul for about three years. We decided to move in together recently and it's not working out. My question is, should I end this relationship now? I don't want to hurt him, yet I'm hurting. My biggest complaint is that he takes me for granted and is way more self-centric than I realized. I broke up with him several times in the past and then missed him. As soon as we were reunited, the cycle started again. I now realize nothing has changed in all these attempts. How do I let him go without drama and hurt feelings? Signed, Broken Hearted. Dear Broken Hearted, this is definitely the year for rebooting and reinventing relationships. The reality is that love should not hurt, and when it does, it's often misaligned. The most important role we play in any relationship is how we teach others how to treat us. This requires healthy boundaries. It often takes self-love and the love for the other to realize it is time to move on. This breaking up action builds a muscle and sets a new standard for who you let into your life and what kind of person you will attract. Let's put the breakup process through the Boots formula. The B in Boots is for being. It's about who you are being and all you're doing and who you need to be during this situation. You are going to have to show up and be firm on your boundaries in order to be okay with small hurt feelings now as you move toward a relationship you desire. The first O in the Boots formula is orientation. In order to go get the outcomes you want, you must be brutally honest. The person I am in a relationship now continues to hurt me. What kind of relationship do I really want? The next O in the Boots formula is for order of operations. This gives clarity to the order you follow to leave current relationships and move toward the one you deserve. The order in which you do things is going to really drive your results. The T in the Booth's formula is for thinking. This is where mindset and self-love have guided your decision. Breaking up is not a judgment against another person. It is an act toward what you really want. It is often in love that we sometimes have to break up with someone, end a relationship, a friendship, or evict a person who's abusive or struggling with an addiction. Thinking time and self-love and logic makes all the difference. The S in the Boots formula is for stepping up. This is the part that takes all the other pieces and puts you and your love life back into action. It is now time to rebuild and reinvent your life on your terms. My hope is that this video series and my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, will help. In my book and on my website, I provide plenty of free resources for anyone dealing with a rock bottom situation to quickly get back into action. The latest book, I have to let you know something, just between you and me. This book is not one size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. to grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. It is now available on Audible as well as on Amazon and Kindle and at www.sheilamack.com. You need a guide to show you how we get through a situation like this to give you resources and to help you get out of the emotional pea soup fog of dealing with a crisis and the resulting fallout. I've been there and I'm here to help you. Out of the fog. If you weren't emotionally bound up in your situation, you would have more clarity. You would be able to see your best options for dealing with whatever comes up. If the version of yourself who has already walked through this rock bottom and come out the other end could go back in time and give you, the you right now, some advice, what would she say? Would she tell you to slow down, to stop rushing, that you don't have to have all the answers today? Would the future you recommend not making any major decisions without reviewing them first particularly while you're still in the fog? Would she tell you that normal 
is going to look different for a while, but that you will feel normal again. In case we haven't invented time travel by the time you read this book, I'm here to tell you all of the above. I developed the Boots formula to help you learn to make choices, have a life shift, and make great things happen based on your individual values and best life vision. A change is going to happen, and it's worth it. There is a stage where it feels like everyone in your life is picking at you. Life itself may seem like it's trying its best to stop you from doing whatever you want to do. All you hear is, that's a stupid idea, and that's never going to work, and who do you think you are? One of the hardest things for people to do is to realign and possibly walk away from anything and anyone that conflicts with their value systems. But you are going to discover that power within yourself. Through the activities and examples in this book, you will discover your true north and will be able to easily do what is needed to move forward with your life. Anything that hurts you, that doesn't resonate for you, that fights against what you want and believe in, you are going to give it the boot. Once you have turned your rock bottom moment into a positive, beautiful life shift, you can live your life on your terms. Your life will probably look different, but you get to design it this time. You are taking your life back and you are in charge, not anybody else. Sooner than you can imagine, You'll be in the career of your dreams or the relationship you always wanted. Because you are going to learn to develop healthy boundaries. Because you are going to do things differently along the way from here to there. You will begin to attract the people, the job, the place to live, all of the opportunities that align with who you are, your essence, your truth, not anybody else's, or even society's expectations of the way you're supposed to be. Once you have accepted that you are in charge of living your life and you begin to embody living your truth, people are going to see you. They're going to be inspired by you. Then you're going to hear, hey, can you show me how you did that? I want to do it too. When you assess your peer group and up-level according to your life purpose and vision, and once you have created a life shift for yourself, whatever that looks like, your life is not just full, it's fulfilled. Not only do you get more and better sleep, you wake up feeling rested and happy. You know that you're doing what you need to do. Yes, Sometimes your heart will call you to leave certain friends or family members in order to find a more aligned peer group. From what I've seen, however, the ones who leave always return to lead their family and friends to success. Because your friends are more in alignment with your beliefs and value system, they support you while also pushing you toward your personal best. Life still involves work, but as a whole, it feels far more effortless. But you don't have to wait for the right person, right job, or right investment opportunity to show up. You can start living now so that every moment as you go forward through the process of recovering from rock bottom and redesigning your life is one more step to being the best version of you. The one who came... All right, if you are looking to reinvent life on your terms, if you are grieving, experiencing financial turmoil, career shifts, relationship problems, parenting, elder care, victims of abuse, breaking free from an addiction, or seeking an overall business and lifestyle redesign, then you may need a reboot. It is not size fits all, just like a pair of boots or a bra. So the formula is designed to help you through any situation. This is Sheila Mack. Thank you again for tuning in and I have some homework for you. So go and get your copy of the new bootstraps and bra straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. It is now on 
Amazon, Audible, Kindle, and all major bookstores. And get ready to tune in daily as I share the Business Leader Reboot. So that is starting a business, side business, or extra income. I don't care if you're starting from zero, rebooting, starting over completely. We are going to go through the steps over this year slowly together to rebuild, reboot, and reinvent your business and personal life or your career and personal life on your terms. And I will also be sharing about investing, um, investing in properties and how to get some passive income going this year as well. So stay tuned. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack show here on KCAA radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I have a special free gift announcement for you. That's right. Get a free introduction to the boots formula and meditation by joining our email list for business leaders, busy moms, and rock stars like you. To get your free gift, just go to www.sheilamack.com slash free gift. That's right, sheilamack.com slash free gift for your gift today. Tune in again right here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation especially right now if life has knocked you down pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today <laughs> 